How do you do, fellow kids? You like my YouTube channel? Yeah? You like my videos about dead rats and suicide? Well, too bad, because this channel is not made for children. So all of you watching, just go away. I'm serious, beat it, kids. You're gonna get me in trouble with the FTC. You're gonna get my ads taken away. For you see, YouTube has been illegally collecting user data on children without the consent of their parents. Naughty, naughty, YouTube. And well, according to the latest agreement between the FTC and YouTube, channels must now comply with the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act and specifically mark whether or not their content is made for children or not made for children. Failure to set your content appropriately may have consequences on YouTube or have legal consequences under COPA or other laws. Well, I hate consequences, so let's just see what some of the determining factors are and find out if my content could be considered children's content. When deciding whether or not your channel or video is made for kids, you should consider various factors, including subject matter of the video, e.g. educational content for preschoolers. Let's learn how to tie a noose, it's easy if you're not obtuse. All you need is a piece of rope and abandon all your hope. Mm, educational, yes, but certainly not made for preschoolers. Whether children are your intended or actual audience for the video. Well, I can say with absolute certainty that no children watch any of my videos, so I think I'm set up. Oh, hold on. Hello, I'm not sure that I would even reach you this way, but I thought it would be super awesome to let you know that my two and a half year old is probably one of your biggest fans. Not sure what that means for me as a parent, ha. Huh? However, every day he asks to listen to your music, which he asks for by name or by something that stands or blah, 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 blah. Uh, not sure what that means for you as a parent. Listen, it's not my job to tell you how to raise your infant child, but if I had a few words of advice, they would be, lady, stop letting your two and a half year old watch my content. The hell is wrong with you? Whether the video includes characters, celebrities, or toys that appeal to children, including animated characters or cartoon figures. How the hell am I supposed to know what appeals to children? I mean, just look at me, I'm a boomer for Christ's sake. Fork knife? TikTok? When I was a kid, TikTok was just the sound that the clock made as we silently watched in horror as the plane struck the second tower. A lot of fine people were lost that day. Whether the language of the video is intended for children to understand. Has it been a minute yet? Okay, good. Hopefully I don't get demonetized. But fuck you, children! Is that language that children can understand? Golly, I hope not. I mean, what are we supposed to do? Speak in some secret adult language like the grown-ups in Charlie Brown? Oh, good grief. I mean, really, how young do these kids have to be that they don't understand language? Well, according to this YouTube article, the age of a kid in the United States is defined as anyone under the age of 13. However, the age of a kid may be higher in other countries. So, make the language of the video so as not to be intended to be understood by anyone under the age of 13? Oh. Whether the video includes activities that appeal to children, such as play acting, simple songs, or games. Jump off the trampoline and land on your neck. A game we all can play. Or early education. Let's learn how to tie a noose. Womp, 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 womp. Ah! Whether the video includes songs, stories, or poems for children. Previously on Rusty Cage. Now, what I had forgotten about back when I released the album was that I had set the musical genre as children's music, thinking that it would be a funny joke, since children love knife game songs. Children's music. Well, this doesn't look so good. God damn it, why do kids have to ruin everything? Now I get it, kids are vulnerable, they need to be protected, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same argument that's been had for centuries. Gotta protect the children. Gotta put parental advisory notices on the rap albums. Gotta put a child safe top on the drain cleaner under the sink. Gotta curate a website's 23 million channels to ensure they follow FTC guidelines. Lest some little brat steals his mother's credit card and buys a mature rated comic book from some guy pretending to be homeless. Listen, by the time that I was 11 years old, I had already seen mutilated bodies on gore sites like Rotten.com, rest in peace. And look at me, I turned out fine. Anyways, my point is, my content is not intended for children. Blah, blah, blah. Don't let your two and a half year old watch my videos, blah, blah, blah. Well, now that that's over, let's get to some questions. Would you make a video showing us your filming setup? 
Absolutely. Well, currently I'm living in a filthy old shed since I recently got kicked out of my old house. So I had to set up my studio in here, but I got everything that I need. So I got my camera, some box lighting, my desk, computer, recording equipment, um, some pallets on the ground, a uh, noose, some uh, creepy vines that are surrounding the roof, some old paint cans, very nice to have around, some weird, weird articles of clothing, which there's like clothing underneath the floorboards on these pallets. Oh my god, what the fuck is it? There's like a bra? Dude, what the fuck? I haven't actually looked under here. There's a sock. There's a bra. I just moved into the shed. There's a bra underneath the pallets. All right, maybe I shouldn't be digging up under these floorboards. Another sock. That's nice. Oh, great. A used condom wrapper. That's cool. Some old beer can. There's some rusty nails that I, uh, I could easily step on those and get infected. Well, I mean, all in all, it's a pretty nice setup. It's not the most ideal place for recording, but these uh, these corrugated tin walls kind of hold in the sound quite nicely. Oh, and of course my cat Carter. So yeah, this is the uh, this is the studio. All right, so now we have some questions from supporters on Patreon. Not so fast. Oh great, not you again. Aren't you forgetting something? Really? You're not gonna make me do another ad read for Raid Shadow Legends again, are you? Jesus, all right, all right. This video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is the most ambitious mobile RPG of 2019. Raid Shadow Legends can only be compared to the biggest PC and console titles. And what's that, what's that you ask? How much does it cost? Why, nothing of course. Raid Shadow Legends is totally free. Not only are there 10 million players worldwide in just six months, Raid has almost 300,000 reviews, giving it almost a perfect score on the Play Store. Check out this cool roadmap that they published. New factions, tag team arenas, and even a new clan boss. You can find me in the game under the nickname Rusty Cage. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on the special links, and you'll get 50,000 silver, plus a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. Raid Shadow Legends. There, I did it. Our contract has been fulfilled. Now leave me be. Sucker. Ugh, sorry about that, folks. Anyways, where was I? Oh yeah, let's get to some questions. Are there any other forms of art that you enjoy besides music and drawing? Sure, I like epoxifying rats and sometimes gluing dead flies together. A lot of musicians talk about the meaning behind the song. Have you ever written a song that just had absolutely zero meaning behind it? Great question. It's really hard to have absolutely zero meaning behind a song, but I think the closest I've come was with my song, Poor Narrator. I'm just your poor narrator. I got no stories to tell. I just started writing lyrics that sounded cool and rhymed with each other, but I didn't have any intent for what the song's message should be, just that I wanted to set a general mood with the lyrics. So if any of you found meaning in it, good for you, because there was none. Out of all the music you've created over the years, which song was the most fun to write? Probably Requiem of the Crazies. Not my comic book, which you can purchase through the links below, but the song from my second album. It's about a homeless man, so writing the lyrics was fun. And the music includes tons of different instruments like banjo, trombone, guitar, piano. So I wanted to try and make more of a orchestral sound, which I very much enjoyed attempting. The song is on YouTube if you want to hear the whole version of it. What made you decide to write full songs that shared lyrics and music with your movie review series? I think the most obvious comparison is between the Inception movie review and The Lies of Love. Lots of music questions coming from Patreon. So I had a video series back in the day where I made song reviews of movies. It wasn't a terrible idea, but it wasn't very fun to do and was kind of gay. So I had written out some catchy chords and vocal melodies that I felt were being wasted on corny movie reviews. And being the lazy person that I am, I figured, hey, why not just steal from myself and reuse those old parts to write them into actual songs? Whoa, Inception. Thoughts you leave behind, I can't open up my mind at all. Whoa, intention, when you leave these things behind, I can't open up my mind at all. 
What's the inspiration behind I'll Come Back to New Orleans? Is it based on something you've really experienced? Well, without getting too personal, yes and no. While the song itself is based on somewhat real events, I definitely played up the writing to make it more emotional. The real story is much less intense. Years back, I went out to New Orleans with a few friends. I had never been before, so I got a feel for the different parts of the city, the food, music, and culture. And of course, I hit up Tinder, where I matched with a stripper who worked at a club on Bourbon Street. We met up, hung out, and then the next day I went back home. Nowadays, she's married with a kid. What are your favorite drinking games, if you have any at all that is? I haven't really played any drinking games since I was in my early 20s. Nowadays, I just drink to drink. But sometimes at the local dive bar, a few of us regulars will shoot dice and wager shots. It's not really where I envisioned I would be at this time in my life, but hey, what can you do? I guess the closest I get to playing drinking games is when I'm drunk driving home and pretend that the road is a racetrack. Just kidding. Drinking and driving is not a game. Top 3 Favorite Emojis? Alright well, thank you all for watching. Sorry I haven't been putting out much content recently. I've been working on finishing the second issue of Requiem of the Crazies comic book. The Indiegogo campaign has passed $18,000 so far, and there's still plenty of time to contribute and reserve your copy of the book. Alright, so all jokes aside, uh, I really did just get access to this shed, and uh, this is legitimately creepy. That is definitely a bra underneath these pallets. I can I can only assume that if I remove these pallets, I would find some some very strange things. Look, what the fuck is that? Is that a shirt? Who buries who buries a fucking bra underneath the pallet? All right, well, hopefully I don't get murdered. Thank you for watching the video. Be sure to hit like, comment subscribe and uh, ring the little notification bell just in case you want to actually watch my videos um, and in case I find out more about this the shed that I'm currently occupying follow me on Twitter and Instagram thanks for watching fellas goodbye